Hi everyone. Welcome to today's episode. I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about engine breathers. Now I know that's not a very exciting subject, but I do think it's a very important one because uh, there's a lot going on with the engine breathing system and I'm going to go through all the components of it and I'm going to talk about why it's necessary, what's needed to make it work properly, and uh, why you would want to have it hooked up. I've seen many cars where they just don't have the breathers hooked up. They're just vented out in the open and they're missing out on some important uh, details about how the system works. So I'm going to start out with the why is it necessary and uh, how it works and then how to hook it up properly to your carburetor or intake manifold because there's two different ways of doing it. So follow along while I go through this process and um, hopefully you guys will learn something new. So where does this pressure come from? Well, it comes from the fuel. As the fuel comes from the carb, goes into the cylinders, gets ignited by the spark plugs, it generates pressure. That pressure pushes the piston down, generating motion of the crankshaft. Well, since the system isn't perfect and not all the gas pressure is contained by the piston, some of it escapes down into the crankcase. Once the pressure gets down here, where does it go? Well, it can either try and go back up against the rings it can try and leak out of a seal somewhere along the case halves or the gearbox or it can go back up through the tappet covers through the the push rod holes working its way up the back side of the engine and gets back into the valve cover area and ends up in here so why is it a problem well it'll cause oil leaks all over the place if it has nowhere to go it has to go out somewhere so it'll find the weakest spot and it'll just leak so what did the factory do to control it? Well, they added breathers. And in the shot here, you can see this is attached to the tappet cover. It's a tappet cover breather, very common. Um, it's got a, a molded hose that goes straight to this fitting on the carburetor. This is a later style connection. Earlier cars, they actually went to the air filter housing. This place here, this is an undrilled fitting on the transfer case. There's also a breather that can go here on, on later cars or larger engine cars. And some engines actually have it attached to the timing cover, as in this uh, this one here. So there, there are many places that a breather can exist. However, they all end up in the same place. So the most common place is this fitting on the side of the carburetor. This is an HS4. The HIF carburetor has the same style fitting. So here's the same breather fitting on the HIF series. The twin carburetor car is slightly different. So this is the manifold for a twin carb. And this fitting here runs this rubber diaphragm uh, system. So it runs the, uh, runs the fumes straight into the intake manifold through this diaphragm. The main difference between this style crankcase breather and this style is that at idle this one will have higher vacuum on the engine than this one will because this one is before the butterfly and this one's after the butterfly so at idle the butterflies are closed this one's going to have full vacuum on it whereas this one has a vacuum on it only when the throttle is open so at higher speeds this one pulls harder which is kind of what you want i mean you want either situation but ideally you know, if the engine's running at high speed, it's generating a lot of gas pressure, you want it to be able to process those gases um, as much as the engine can produce. That way you run a neutral pressure in the crankcase. If you have a fairly fresh engine, it won't generate a lot of pressure, but a fairly warm one will generate a lot of pressure, and that's why you want to have a good breather system operating correctly to make sure it deals with that excess pressure. The problem with the pressure in the crankcase is that what it'll do is just cause oil leaks out either the main seal or timing cover seal or any of the gasketed surfaces, wherever the weakest spot of the system is, that's where it's going to leak because of the excess pressure. So if you just have the breathers open, you don't get to take advantage of the engine vacuum that can be applied to the system to mitigate that pressure. And the engine is far more capable of pulling the gases out of the block than it is to push them out through the breathers themselves because the breathers have a wire mesh material inside them to act as a filter. So it's not just an open hole for the gases to escape out of. 
In addition, running it through the breather system means that the engine processes the, the fumes. So you have oil, splashing oil from the crankcase. You have unburned gas, fuel. You also have uh, exhaust, you know, burned gases all mixing around and coming out these things. So the, the fumes are fairly noxious. But And by running it to the carburetor, you've reprocessed all those fumes. The engine burns it effectively and it blows up the tailpipe as a, a finished product rather than having you, the driver and passenger, having to breathe these vapors coming off the engine. So one important aspect of the breather system is that it is a closed loop. The pressure builds up, gets sucked in here and goes into the carburetor. There is one small location where fresh air is allowed into the block and that's with this cap here. So this cap has a very small hole in the center and there's a hole back here. So this cap is the way that fresh air enters the engine under a vacuum condition. It comes in through the small hole, there's a mesh behind here to filter any particulates and then it comes out through here and into the engine. So this is how the airflow is controlled going to the carburetor. It's a controlled vacuum leak. The other common style cap is this style. Once again, you can see there's a small hole in mesh and there's a breather hole in the side here where air comes in through the mesh and then into the block. This, by the way, is a service item. You're supposed to change this about every 12,000 miles because it'll get full of dust and dirt and you just need to change it out. Um, you could take this apart and clean all the mesh and stuff, but these things are so cheap, I just replace them, you know, once a year, year and a half, depending on the mileage. But the key to this is that you need to have the controlled air leak with either this cap or this cap in order for the breather system to work, because otherwise the engine can actually generate too much vacuum and uh, cause issues by pulling air in from some other location and causing an air leak. So make sure that you have, again, good hose conditions, good clamps, uh, good gasket sealing at wherever the breathers are attached and make sure you have air coming in through your cap if you're running a breather system. Now, if you're running a race car or something, you're not going to do any of this stuff, but on most road cars, yeah, make sure that this is new and fresh and actually has air passing through it. You can, you know, put air against this and make sure that it does flow. I've seen cars where this has been so restricted that um, just by changing the cap has changed the mixture because it's now flowing properly. So do pay attention to the condition of this cap. Same thing with this. Uh, these, either replace them or try and clean them. So there is one more version of the breather system and it's on these injection cars. It has the transfer case breather or clutch breather. It has the timing cover breather. Both of these run straight to the intake manifold, but it also has one more breather system, which is over here and this runs to the fuel tank. So it actually takes uh, fuel tank vapors and it goes to this solenoid valve here into the intake and the computer controls when this valve is open and closed. But um, this is the only other version of the breather system that Mini's ever had was this uh, this injection type. And it's the same design for the single point it is as it is for the twin point cars. But again, the same principles apply. These hoses need to be in fantastic shape, no cracks, no splits, um, in order for the system to work. And again, it also has the standard vented cap, as you saw earlier. So even though it's a fuel injected car, it's the same principles apply. Everything must be in good shape in order for the system to work properly and not have uncontrolled air leaks. So hopefully that discussion on breathers made a little bit of sense. I know that there's a lot to talk about and there's various configurations of it, but um, whatever configuration you have, make sure that you understand how the air is flowing from the cap, through the block, through your breathers, back to the carburetor. Make sure that it's all hooked up, make sure it's nice and tight, make sure there are no air leaks, and enjoy your fume-free driving experience. Like I said, I find it I find often that these hoses are disconnected and, and air filters are just attached to the end of these pipes. Um, it's a very ineffective way of controlling the compression gases. The breather system is far more useful in this case. So if you guys think this video was useful or interesting, let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching.
and I'll see you guys soon.